Jennifer Brazier is an evidential medium. Is I'm here to bring your loved ones alive. For years, she has been a conduit who shares messages from the unseen world with those of us who still walk this earth. In addition to sharing healing messages, teaching others to receive messages of their own, and assisting police and rescue groups with locating missing people, Jennifer has always loved to explore various locations, to touch the soil of our ancestors, and experience how those who came before us lived. Oh my gosh, this is awesome where we're at. She uses her highly attuned senses to communicate the stories of real people by giving those in the unseen world the opportunity to have a voice once again and inviting them to share their stories with her. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> we are doing a spur of the moment live chat, catching up with some really good friends and talking about a new TV show that's coming up called Past But Present. So I am with my two fabulous friends, Jennifer Brazier, who is a medium. And I met her, oh gosh, whenever year, years ago at our live We Don't Die event in Orlando and also the fabulous Robert Lyon, who is a filmmaker and just fabulous guy, dear friend of mine. And he was the one responsible for the Sonia Rinaldi movie. So great people. So hi guys. Hey. Hello. Thanks this is nice fun, interview. isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. so nice to have us all together. It's really I nice. Know. Technology, right? Technology is great. Yeah, I haven't seen either one of you live in a long time. So this is the next best thing. But this is what we do. So anyways, um, you guys are cooking up something. I didn't realize it. But I saw a couple of your videos. And uh, yeah, what's going on? And you know, where did this idea of a TV show come from? Well, this idea came about spontaneously, while filming the Rinaldi documentary. So Jen was on a, I guess, a little vacation yeah, with a couple, couple friends in um, Central Florida. And I took the opportunity because I wanted to interview her for the Rinaldi documentary. So I went up to Central Florida to meet with her, hang out for the weekend. And um, we were sitting in the backyard of the house and she there's this big land preserve, like a big forest and a huge river, really beautiful countryside. And Jennifer said, I'm feeling propelled to go into this forest here, come with me. And I said, well, let me get my camera first. So I followed her into the forest and she was just lit up with goosebumps and excitement because she was getting all kinds of communication from what we believe is our Native Americans that occupied that land 100 or 200 years ago, who knows how far back. But while we were running around in the forest and just I was just filming her I was thinking to myself the whole time this is this would be a great documentary or a tv show or something so that's what we're doing now we're cultivating this idea that came about spontaneously and we're going to we've already traveled to Colorado and some places in Florida filming the episodes but we're trying to build enough content for a full season tv show that we can you know put on cable or streaming services and you know and and people can watch a real entertaining adventure television show that involves evidential mediumship pretty cool and jen i watched just some of the footage are you literally surprised at where you go like you don't know i have no idea other than the airport I know where I am flying into and I know where I will be flying back to. Other than that, I have zero idea. Other, and I also know who's gonna be picking me up, so I feel safe. My husband knows, so I'm not like randomly being like kidnapped somewhere. But um, no, it's, it's exciting. And I trust who I'm with. And the spirit world is amazing. It's like they are giving us gifts and we get to kind of unwrap them. And that's how I kind of look at this. It's like every day, every situation is something new. It's, it's really, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. 
and um, I love it. It just sounds like a fun concept. So now be honest, after you had that experience in the woods, were you sitting having a glass of wine and saying, you know what we should do? <laughs> Can I, I, let me jump in on that one there because no, we, we did not. So I'm gonna go back, go back about a year and a half. And we happened to be at a We Don't Die conference in Orlando. And I am the first time that I get to meet you in person, Sandra. And we are um, all together the very first night before we all greet and meet um, the individuals that are coming. And at the end of it, I walk up to Robert and his now wife, Maggie, and I say to Robert, I go, are you ready? And I, it kind of like came out of my mouth. And he says, for what? And I says, well, I don't know, but are you ready? And he says, oh, oh yeah. You know, and Robert's kind of, oh, yeah, okay, what? I don't know. So, yeah, we enjoy a glass or two of wine, and we kind of think, what is that? And we enjoy the conference, and I'm going to kind of push forward. We go to another conference, and we run into each other. This time, I walk up to him, and I literally touch him physically on his chest and go, are you ready? Like, I am kind of a bully. And we go both kind of laugh about it. I'm now embarrassed and kind of ignore, try to ignore him for the rest of the conference because, I mean, I'm a little bit <laughs> forthright. So that is, I want to set that piece of it because that unfolds to why we are ready or are you ready? So I'm going to fast forward to what Robert just talked about that. I'm having this girls weekend and a couple of the other individuals um, arrived before myself. And so one of the gals says, she sends to both Robert and I on this email uh, link that says, um, in front of where we turn into where we're going to be staying, there's a big marquee that somebody had rolled out and they were about to build a new, some new property in front of it. It says, are you ready? Right before we drive in. And so as we are driving in, you see the marquee, are you ready? So then the, the situation happens when he and I are outside and I feel just pulled to go into this area. So that is kind of the unfoldment of Are You Ready and how it turns into the production company. Oh, pretty cool. Tell, tell them who are your friends were that you were vacationing with. So the two wonderful girlfriends are um, Stephanie or Bebe Kennedy and uh, Lisa uh, Lulanowski. So two individuals that just love you, Sandra. And if it wasn't for We Don't Die, I don't know where all of this would come together. So on a higher level of the spirit world, realizing that we can be their voice. Friendships have been created that are, oh yeah, incredible. So these ladies are still a part of the film. They're, def they're a huge part, cornerstone of ensuring that I'm taken care of, that Robert's needs are, you know, put into action also. So it, it takes a village. And this goes back to the first We Don't Die in Orlando after your Boston one in 2019, because Phil and Carrie were going to do the, um, the mediumship training. And I was there to film everything. But Sandra, you said, why don't you just sit in this class and enjoy and don't worry about filming it. And that was the first day. It was a Thursday. And I, um, I was learning about sitting in the power for the first time. I didn't know anything about it. And my partner that we would sit, we would sit with random people in the room was Lisa. And I never have tried this kind of meditation or try to read somebody, but we had such an incredible 10 minute session together because I was giving her a reading, whatever came into the, you know, into my mind, I would say, and she'd say yes or no. And then I would realize when I was just kind of talking or when I was actually getting some kind of information and, and um, turns out, you know, I was getting a lot of things right with her and we've just been friends ever since. And she helped me write the script for Rinaldi as well. Um, because she's such an expert in, in words. So she helped me out a lot with the script. And now she's our fact checker and co-producer on this program. You guys are keeping her busy. And so is Sonia Rinaldi. Lisa, I know. <laughs> shout out to you because she, she does so much. And, you know, there's always those unsung heroes that are behind the scenes. And oh, yes. Um, Lisa well, is one. 
And, and funny enough, simultaneously, my wife Maggie was in the class with us and she was partnered up with Stephanie and wow. giving her a reading, which she was, the, through the coaching of Phil and Carrie, was getting a lot of the information correct as well. And it's just mind blowing. And when we were talking about this all after, you know, we had that cocktail hour at the end of the day, that's when Jennifer kept screaming at me. <laughs> Oh, we do love the cocktail hour. We do. And just a shout out also to our friends, Carrie and Phil. Our yes. community is so great. And I think the spirit world knows that if you set up people that get along together as friends and really care about each other, you know, they can work together and get this message out to the world. So ever since COVID hit, um, also with Scott Milligan and, and Darren Wynn, they're great friends of our We Don't Die family. But Carrie and Phil had taught live the mediumship when we were together. And we'll do that again sometime. But for the last couple of years, we've been doing online classes and our new new classes actually start this week. So a little plug if anybody wants to join Ooh. in. You know, it's really interesting because we all want evidence that the afterlife exists. We do. And we put a little pressure on our loved ones to give us signs. But a lot of people don't know that, like you said, sitting in the power, Robert, and getting in touch with our own soul. When you start having these mind-blowing experiences, you start realizing that you are so much more um, as a powerful soul, that you're just not the, the flesh and blood you think you are. But once you get on that journey, yeah, the synchronicities happen, the right people come into your life and you have fun. So it's pleasurable to be on this journey. And um, even you, Robert, I mean, we met at the races when I was cooking for the race car teams and you ate in our tent and you saw my, yeah. we don't die. I mean, it all stems mm -hmm. back from somewhere. That's, I mean, I guess we've met nearly, I don't know, 10 years ago now. And wow. that was when I was a photographer for uh, the car race team, uh, Patron. And I'd have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in your tent. And then you had to sign up on the corner that said, you know, we don't die a skeptic's, you know, discovery of the afterlife. And I was curious about the book, so I bought it, but I hadn't met you yet. And then I read it two times before I actually approached you to do some kind of video work with you. I really wanted to apply my video work to this kind of subject matter. And um, it's been crazy. And then a couple of weeks ago, I went to Boston, but I was a little bit far away from where you live, but I was really close to where you used to live. And you know this, because we were texting about it, but I think people will be interested in this synchronicity, but my wife Maggie's best friend moved to Byfield where you have your, had your house for so many years. And that's where I went and interviewed you for the first time. And we were, we were walking distance from your old house. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Crazy. I actually still own that house with my aunt and she's there full time. But um, just after COVID hit, you know, mom and I lost our racing business. And so I relocated for 90% of the time I'm here in Rhode Island with mom. But I still own that house. I'm going there next week. Got to go up to vote. <laughs> and okay. uh, yeah, it's. I drove by it two times a day. while we It's were wild. Visiting. I know That's, yeah. because it's such a small town and like what are the odds that our friends from Miami would move to your neighborhood yeah exactly but we're getting off off the point well we're so <laughs> off topic but that's okay because it's just exciting you just never know you just never know yes, um, but it's like these breadcrumbs that the spirit world puts out mm -hmm. and I think I'm sure I know this that when we transition we keep our personalities and we keep our senses of humor so you know the little game they might play it's like oh let's put let's have this couple move here to buy field and let's do this and let's set these people up and, you know, and just see how it all unfolds. I'm sure they're watching us just giggling and loving it. So anyways, let, um, we brought some of the, uh, clips of the past, but present show with us. Can we play one of them? Go for it. Please do. Okay. Robert set us up for one and then I will play it. Let's see. I can't remember which ones you sent me. But I got them all. Okay. Well, the um, first episode we have filmed in Colorado, and I kind of went on Google Earth and randomly found a uh, search for ghost towns because I thought that would be an interesting subject matter. And I found a ghost town in the Colorado Rockies, a couple hours outside of Denver, and it's called St. Elmo. 
So you we, know, I don't even know this, Robert. I did not even know that's how you decided oh. on a location. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I told Jen that we're gonna, she needs to fly to Denver. And then we picked her up with Bebe and Lisa. And we drove, uh, it was a couple hours and it was at nighttime. So Jen couldn't see where we're going. She had no idea what we were doing. And that's the fun part about this. We take her almost in some cases blindfolded onto locations. So if I know that there's a, a trail that we want to hike that has some historical significance, we put a blindfold on her so she doesn't see the sign and can associate it with anything. So she literally takes the blindfold off and is on a trail in the middle of nowhere and starts to work and she gets so much correct. And what we do is we go into historical records and that's where Lisa helps out. Um, and we research the area and we see what, what she got right. And it's it's been amazing. It's really okay, so the first one, is, let's do the Jennifer Arrives one, okay? Go for it. Okay, and then we'll meet back up after we play this. This is fun, guys. So I just landed in Denver, Colorado. And as I was flying in for the last three hours from Seattle, I started getting, um, Little bits of information. It was kind of curious. I Jennifer Brazier, an evidential medium, has been brought here by our documentary crew. She has no clue where she is being taken. The only information she was given was her airport arrival location in the city of Denver. From there, it is a three-hour drive in an unknown direction for her. Um, and all of a sudden, I had a visitation from a man, an older man, a white man, smaller, like five foot six. Uh, kind of scruffy and he was showing me by a river and he had a pan in his hand. I believe he was uh, panning for gold or stones or some sort of rocks and I do believe we'll get to meet him later on. To preserve the integrity of Jennifer's mediumship, the destinations she is embarking on are kept secret. She has had no time to research anything about the region. She has no idea where she is. We were on the road for three, maybe three and a half hours. We stopped to get something for dinner and we just got to, I'm gonna call it a chalet. It's incredible. I walked in and immediately I felt embraced. I felt the love. I, I immediately heard that, I, that um, Nana was here and I came outside and could hear the roaring water. This is paradise. I, I have absolutely no idea where I'm at. I know I'm in Colorado somewhere. But this is magical, it's special, and I can't wait to see how it unfolds, to see who is here, to let us know how we can share their truth. Oh, Robert, you're such an excellent filmmaker. I, I love the footage, it gives me excitement, and now I just want to watch more. <laughs> it's, it's really fun, and I love watching it, you know, myself, and also experiencing it. But Jen makes a great TV host. <laughs> if you want to call it a host, I don't know if that's a host, but I don't know if that's what you really want to call me because you're, you're, not a getting, host. you're getting 100% of my personality, you guys. Yeah. And I can tell you, my mouth can run one way and run the other way. And um, it, it's interesting to watch yourself, but also to, to remember and to recall those feelings. They're very emotional for me. And uh, there's a lot of tears and I, and I always tell Robert, please don't film me when I'm crying. And it's, oh, the spirit world just, they are so excited that they get to have a voice again and that somebody is interested in hearing their story. Yeah. So you can cry on camera, you know? I, I know, but you're like, you don't want to have ugly things. Here's the thing, <laughs> you're more, we're more relatable if we're just real. There's far too many people on TV with TV shows and stuff. And even a lot of the medium shows, they just show the good stuff, you know? They don't show all the rest. And it's just, it's nice to feel that you're a real person. We can relate to you. So just keep being yourself. Well, that's that's also the difference between what we're doing and the TV shows you might see on Netflix. This is a small production. This is from the heart. It's from us, it's authentic, it's real. We're not, backed by a Hollywood production company. We're not trying to jazz it up. You know, we're, we're just doing something that was, that came spontaneously and we thought it would be a, you know, a program that people would enjoy. Um, so everything is authentic on this show. There's no retakes. 
you know we don't that's true we don't, we don't. We don't no set script. anything up nothing is There's scripted no script. and yeah so i mean we have outtakes that's for sure <laughs> I, bet. I, bet. I bet you do I bet. I bet you do um so let's tell tell us about the next video on the journey to saint elmo what's that about rob you remember jen um so we were on the journey to saint elmo we were driving through this gorgeous scenery oh. uh, in the rocky mountains you know there's snow-capped mountains and we're just having a great time just getting there but um where St. Elmo is, this ghost town is, it's an old gold mining town from the 1800s, late 1800s. And it's up in the peaks of the, the Colorado Rockies. So the drive there was just fantastic. And along the way, Jennifer made me, or made Bebe stop the car. I call her Bebe, because I think that's awesome. Her family calls her Bebe. Um, but we stopped the car because Jen felt an urge to get out and explore this there was a, a little cemetery on the side of the road which turned out to be the cemetery for some of the miners that worked in that town and also some other surprises which i don't want to spoil if we're going to show the clip right now okay let's go for the clip <laughs> here we go on the road to saint elmo it's jennifer's first full day on this adventure to chase the truth in colorado what stories will she uncover? I know I have a man with me right now. To validate her messages from the deceased, our production team follows and documents along the way to later verify through historical records and articles the true stories being told from across the veil. We will bring you the information and validation as the narrative unfolds. So I'm asking for validations is what I'm asking for. Give me information. Kind of like what you asked me is, do I ever get anything before? Typically, I don't. This is um, unusual for me. The road to St. Elmo follows the Chalk Creek from Highway 50, cutting deep in between the snow-capped peaks of the Sawatch Range. Along the way, Jennifer feels the need to stop the car. I feel like we have to, you can see there's something down there. It's like we have to go down there. <sighs> wow. I just heard we're home. We're home. I feel like I need to go over here and I feel like we're going to see where some babies or little children are buried. Haley. Wow. She was four years old when she died. She's kind of greeting us and she's very playful like, as if she wants us to um, kind of not worry that we're stepping on anyone, that we're to have a joyful time. Literally, like she's holding my hand. We've got another young one here, too. Wow, we're, we are where the babies are. This is really really cool. Ow. Oh. I feel very happy and very childlike. I feel very like I want to uh, skip. <laughs> oh, wow. This is important. This is important. I'm very dizzy. <sighs> yeah, I feel like we've got more than one child in there. Wow. I know that this child uh, passed from an illness. I feel like my body's taken over. It uh, was born healthy, but unfortunately got some sort of disease. Oh, wow. Indeed, many children who passed from a scarlet fever pandemic and diphtheria are buried here. Know that when our children pass and they're buried, and no matter how, they still survive what took their lives and that is very important that these kids want to say that no matter if they had to leave their world our world early is that they are taken care of on the other side and they're filled with joy and love and when they go home they're 
wow, greeted by those that left before them, their ancestors. Children are never alone, never alone. They are never scared. It's us here that are still living in the physical that we grieve and we have the pain. These kids are right now singing, they're dancing, they're playing. I feel like I'm at recess and it's like they don't want to go back inside. So I think that this, that is a powerful message that they're sharing with us is that even though they had to leave, they are where they need to be to make sure that we are all taken care of. Oh, you know, it's so priceless for parents to know that our children go on. Um, Jen, I know you've worked with a lot of bereaved parents and um, maybe you could just say a little bit more about that. Kids are healthy, they're whole, they're well, they're oh. alive. Well, working, you know, any parent that has lost a child, it doesn't matter how old the parent is or how old the child is. When a child leaves the physical earth before a parent, it is devastating. Um, but in, in working with the young kids, the babies, the adults, those that have left, they continuously always say that they are never alone, that they are never afraid where they are at, and in fact, that they are joyous and having such a good time and that they want their mommies and their daddies and their friends and their families to smile again and to laugh again, that they'll get to see them. And that message is so important, just so important that, you know, when we leave here, we are greeted by those, it could be our ancestors, our loved ones, it could be friends, families, our animals are out there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that message itself is one of the cornerstones of why I feel it's so important that this message gets out there that um, when we do leave this physical earth, we do live on. Absolutely. And yes, we do not die, we survive. We do. There's no fear. There really isn't. The fear is here. Yeah. Our living life here is the hardest part of our existence. And I think there is a lot we can get out of life, you know, and different emotions, different experiences and Absolutely. failures are not failures. Everything is an adventure and learning for the soul. Um, and we just a shout out to our friends at helping parents heal oh, Yes. Because if you're a parent yes. and you want to find out more, it's one one of the one grief support groups that believes in the afterlife. So they've got a great YouTube channel. They've got a great support. I think they have over 15,000 global members. So helpingparentsheal.org, completely free. And even on our weekly Sunday gathering, we do a, a spiritual service that's free every Sunday, two o'clock New York time. Um, there's so many children that come through with messages to their parents that it's lovely. They don't, there's no remembrance of pain or anything like that. They want to prove that they're alive, that they're still part of the family's life. And it's, it's joy to see those reunions. But anyways, back to the show. Um, I love that clip and it really sounds Robert, like you have in the plans and don't tell us locations because you know of course jennifer's here but what kind of places are you looking to bring her to like what's the underlying yeah. <laughs> um that's a good question because we've got four we've filmed four episodes already three were in colorado two were in florida and we're going to do a couple more in florida and then beyond that, I haven't decided on the locations yet. So I don't even know. So, But historical places that there's stories? Um, well, yeah, well, I, I like to find a place that I can verify the information. So a, a town with a little bit of history, um, you know, and then, yeah, so I can go back and say, well, these things that Jennifer said are true. So you'll see in the next clip, she, Jennifer actually even gets a name and then I and I didn't know the name at the time but when I went through the historical records of the town this person's name was a prominent person that helped build that town and what are the odds that Jennifer would just pick this random person's name and then that person it was a first name um would be you know so prominent in the in building that ghost town in in, in St. Elmo in, in Colorado so I thought that was really interesting. So for the for the future episodes, I don't have locations picked yet. So yeah, nobody knows yet. I don't even that more exciting. Well, let's play the, the last clip, shall we? Sure. 
fun to watch these. And then we can want to find out about the YouTube channel and what else is going on, because I know you're posting regularly there. Okay, here we go. Are we at a mind? M-I-N-E, not a mine, but a mine. Does anybody understand that, yes or no? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. I've got two men that are greeting me. I know that they died in the mind. Oh my gosh, this is awesome where we're at. I'm on fire. That big cement. Mm-hmm. And I knew that that is associated with a mine, M-I-N-E. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I'll need you to talk out loud to me, though, please, because mm -hmm. the shaking, I'll have to look at you. Okay. Sorry, I'm wound up right now, so sorry okay. if I'm being bossy. Yeah, okay. Um, I also know that there is a fire. I, I had two men that greeted me when um, I got out of, the, out of the car, and I heard the name Davis, and I heard the name, I don't remember now, um, I think it's Herman. Was it? Okay. Um, and I know that both of these men died in the shaft. And I also know there was a fire that took place here. Do you understand any of that information? Yes. Okay. Uh, what part of that do you understand? The fire. The fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, um, yeah, I'm being suffocated. So I know that something collapses and it's dark and I'm being suffocated. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Just butt in and say yes on anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, that was almost made me laugh. We're going. St. Elmo is now a historical tourist destination. Many of the old buildings have been preserved. Others have been renovated. But visitors have actually been coming here since the 1880s. I just heard that this is a lot for show. Not what we're doing, but how they have this um, preserved. I feel as if a um, fire came through here too. Yes. I know, I feel that um, the men are talking about the mine, but I also feel like I, uh, a fire came in this area here yes. and really destroyed a lot of what they had already built up. A fire burned part of St. Elmo in 1890. Another fire occurred in 1898, burning down a larger portion of St. Elmo's commercial district. And yet, Another devastating fire occurred a year later. When the men weren't working, they loved to drink. They worked hard and they partied hard. They drank hard. I also am being told that there wasn't enough women here. This so is, This is true. And so the men, um, amongst themselves really would have preferred to have more women around. I mean, just gonna leave that that. There's also a really, um, like it's very saturated with a family. Like there's yes. one family yes. that um, probably started this area yes. and started gathering the other people up. Yes. Um, Tell us more. And I also feel with him, is, oh, do you know this man's name, just yes or no? Yes. Because I feel like he's trying to give me his name. Um, I feel like there's a nickname that goes with him. Yes. And so I must say like if his name was Michael, he went, he had like Mickey or something. There's a, he's got a shortened version of it. And there's a, like an I-E or a Y at the end. At that moment, Jennifer was standing directly in front of the historic home of Anton Tony Stark perhaps the most notable man to set up residence in St. Elmo. Tony, along with his son Roy, attempted to keep the town alive during its downturn. Tony's daughter, Annabelle Stark, is rumored to still inhabit the town, watching over and protecting it in her spirit form. Wow. <laughs> Jennifer, you are bossy, but you're very funny. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> No, can I, I'm gonna be honest here. Yeah. I have been nicknamed by my crew the bitch medium. I will own it. 
is because when I'm working with the spirit world and, you know, I'm getting the information so darn fast that if I don't get it out of me, mm-hmm. I'm not going to remember it. And so my alliance is to be a voice for them. And if somebody is, you know, talking, if, just, it's what, if they're doing whatever, I have from the beginning of time of, of supporting the spirit world and doing this work, I will call people out to be quiet. Please listen. And it's coming through strong. I asked Robert, please don't put some of this in there. And he goes, oh, no, it's just show who you are. And I'm like, oh, God. No, we got to be entertained. No, but it's real. I mean, I know there's mediums out there that let people do far too much talking. And we, anybody watching, if you see a medium, just yes or no. Don't Mm -hmm. don't give them information, let them work. But also we need to show a little reverence to our friends in the spirit world because their voice needs to be heard. You know, they probably planted this idea in your heads um, to do this because it's a, it's a different angle of showing people that the afterlife is real. And so there's, it's not one stop shopping. Some people are interested in maybe in my podcast. Some people watch some reality TV shows and things, but all these different ways, just let people know that the afterlife is real. The loved ones are still around. So yeah, keep that level of integrity. I think it's great. And um, go ahead, Rob. That's the goal. You know, we want to, you know, show people that life after death is real. And these are authentic communications that Jennifer is getting. And it's, this all happened. I mean, it's nothing is doctored here. So it's, it's really evidential. It's proof. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I always try to put the clips of Jennifer crying and pitching at people in there. <laughs> oh my God. That's great. And Jen, I know you were in the cemetery and you said the babies, can you just rest everybody's minds that people do not hang out in cemeteries? Once oh my gosh. Die. Please. Thank you for, thank you. Especially sent. Yes. People, animals, scary things do not exist in cemeteries. In fact, there's really nothing scary with the afterlife. It has been manufactured by TV, by books, to, you know, to make money. But in reality is, is that um, our loved ones, no matter how they died, how old they were, still stay with us. And I don't mean like they hang out 24 seven with us, but when we think about them, they then give us that sense, that feeling, that knowing that they're still around. We may be prompted to talk about a memory of them, be aware of a special date. They love for us to talk about them. They love, love, love for us to remember them. Yeah. But please know that they're not in pain. Nobody. Get, my opinion is that nobody gets stuck. Nobody just is out there floating or anybody is still suffering from whatever was going on. They're all healed. Really, it's uh, it's a beautiful place. What I understand and what I've been shown, and um, I'm just yeah. Please know that everything's manufactured. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, and some people, you know, some of these paranormal shows and things, they get people involved, and so that's okay. You know, I don't mind entertainment. I really don't. No, nobody's stuck. We're either here or there, and you know, heaven or the afterlife isn't out there somewhere. I think our world is within their world. So it's great to to have a different way of looking at the reality of the afterlife. So guys, what's next? Now you've got a website, you've got a YouTube channel. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yeah, we we, um, chat about that. We filmed filmed five episodes so far. Three were in Colorado. One was in Casadega, Florida at uh, Emily and Shane Gershevsky's house, the Ann Stevens house in Casadega, who you met because they were at the 2019 we don't die or the discovery course one or the other um they hosted us and that is actually probably my favorite episode because it's just wild we go into the woods and discover the history of casadega through jennifer's mediumship unbelievable stuff really fun um nobody's seen it yet it's all on my hard drive and we're gonna do um we have a youtube channel which you have the link for, but it's past but present on YouTube. You could probably just search past but present TV and you'll find it easier. Um, So I'm going to put out clips as we move forward while we're doing the production because we want to produce, I don't know, six more episodes to get like a full 10 episodes before we put it out there for the streaming services. Um, So in the meantime, I'm going to make clips 
So it, it's everybody wants to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get some fresh content every now and then uh, while we're doing the show. Um, so, and then we did an episode in Miami, which is oh, yes. really interesting because um, Jennifer made a contact with a famous m mobster. Uh, this is, yeah. Al Capone. Oh. <laughs> and it's unbelievably evidential because she did not know where we were going. She didn't know any history on Al Capone, but we sat there and she had a basically a conversation with Al Capone. And while I was listening to it, I'm like, oh, this is Al Capone. All the, the details were, were just perfect. And um, so that episode is not edited yet, but we're working on that. And then the rest is to be continued. Wow. Now I know it's expensive as we did the Sonia Rinaldi documentary together. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we can throw in a few bucks to make this happen? Yes, on uh, pastbutpresent.com, I put a donate button and anybody that donates $10 will give you all the episodes when it's ready. Um, but that money will, will help us produce the next six episodes. So we need to, we need to travel to these locations, you know, flights, gas, food, everything is so expensive. Uh, we're doing this all out of our own pockets. We're not backed by any kind of Hollywood production company. Uh, this is just me, Jen, and our friends, Lisa, Stephanie, Kenna, shout out to Kenna, uh, who yeah. helped us, Maggie, Maggie also came along on our trips. Um, but yeah, all this stuff, you know, it's, it's expensive. So we throw it on our credit cards and forget about it, but you know, that's not sustainable. So hopefully we can drum up some interest and in some, somebody, maybe there's a investor out there that wants to call me, but, um, yeah, so we would appreciate any donations that would help us produce the next six episodes for season one of Past But Present. Oh, it's so exciting. Well, any <laughs> closing words from you guys? I know time is tight and our mm -hmm. no. here. Probably busy. Thanks for, for having us on to, to do this. And um, 2023 is going to be a, a great year with lots of stuff going on with, with us, with all of us right here. We Don't Die Films, Are You Ready Productions. We're going to do a lot of cool stuff this year. Uh, Jen, any? Oh, Sandra, thank you so much. I mean, you are a dear, dear sister to me, family. And I just appreciate the opportunity to sit with you this morning and to enjoy a cup of coffee with both of you, but also to kind of push out this concept, this, you know, docu-series that um, has come to light. I know that we're coming to the end of 22 here and I just, and I, I really lean and trust that the spirit world is kind of navigating a lot of this. And I, I know marvelous things are ahead, magnificent things that we probably wouldn't be able to really wrap our heads around right now. And I don't think anybody could research that right now and prove that other than I'm saying, and I'm not, I don't predict, well, maybe I am predicting, but you guys, it's going to be wonderful. And I can't wait to hug you in person again, Sandra. Yeah. And Robert, you too. It'll happen. It, it let's all just make a little pact, everybody, that the 2023 is just gonna be a great year. Don't know how, don't know how it's gonna unfold, but it's gonna be fabulous. And I think just last words from me, our home base is we don't die.com. And I'm up to close to 500 episodes of all things afterlife between my we don't die radio show and also my new shades of the afterlife which is on iheart radio with our friends at coast to coast am so there's a lot of reasons to believe in the afterlife and it takes being proactive it really does as much as we'd like to say dad are you there and you know bolt of lightning strike in the sky or the lights go on and off it doesn't work that way our our friends in the spirit world they give us subtle messages what seems like your imagination is how they communicate so don't be surprised if all of a sudden there's a, a random thought of a shared memory together or a feeling or a smell of maybe a cigar or grandma's chocolate cookies 
you just never know but it's important to be in the present moment and pay attention to those also you'll find all kinds of good things i can't recommend our sunday gathering enough it is free and it's fabulous it will empower you for the week and we always have some really great classes coming up as well uh, everything is recorded so you can join anytime you get the replays and just be part of our family and then just one last thing if you have not yet watched the movie uh that's that um, Robert made on Sonia Rinaldi. It is really, really great. Rinaldi, instrumental transcommunication to the other side. And this beautiful lady who is down in Brazil has been working over 30 years with capturing voices and now videos and pictures of people that are in the afterlife. It, there's nothing quite like it. I get goosebumps even just talking mm -hmm. about it. It's a very well-made documentary. And you can find that also at wedontdie.com. Just click on the store page. So guys, gals, everybody, I just want to thank you. We love you, Sandra. And we oh. love everybody that we're friends with through the We Don't Die community. Shout out to Scott and Darren, Phil and Carrie, uh, Lisa, Stephanie, everybody. Uh, and the community. we love you guys. All right. Yes. Thanks, guys. I love we'll you too. Our, our live stream, and then I'll talk to you guys for just a second. All right. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>